What's going on guys? Gibbs is back and we're talking about eight things not mentioned in the June patch. So Sionic Slavers bring out patch notes. Uh, so this is the, the June major patch. There was a small one today that fixed audio issues. Either today or whenever like you're listening to this. This is June 28th. Fixed some audio issues and a couple of language issues and uh, Neo Tokyo got some wall fixes. So not including those. We're going to go over things not mentioned in the June patch. Some are bigger. Some are smaller. You decide. And let me know if you can think of anything else that I did not include in this video. Let's get right to it. Disable goal reset is back. I love this for viewer games. And I actually just thought of another thing that was not mentioned. Uh, but before I get to that. Uh, disable goal reset. When it first came out, the ball just spawns back in the middle. Right after you score a goal. And play is continuous. Like players don't respawn. You just keep going. So it uh, added a different element of... Basically, you score, but you want to have someone on defense. It made it fun, because it was just five minutes of continuous action. It was good for viewer games, like that's where I used it. Uh, but then, in a patch, I can't remember which one it was, but uh, they kind of just changed it without letting anyone know. And basically what happened was, when the ball was scored, players would respawn like normal, but there would just be no replay. So the ball and players would respawn like if there was a goal in a normal setting, but there's usually a replay there. There just was no replay. You'd still have the three, two, one countdown. Uh, that really upset me because I was like, why would you take out a feature? Especially because it's a custom game like Mutator. So why not uh, keep it in there? So the latest patch actually changed it back to how it was. The only exception is in overtime. It used to be the ball would just reset uh, in the middle when the ball landed at zero seconds. Now it respawns everyone and does a countdown. Which is probably better off, but I kind of like cheesing some uh, overtime goals while everyone's ball chasing. Trying to get that goal in at zero seconds. I would just sit there and wait for a face-off shot. But hey, you can't get everything that you need. And then the other thing that I forgot to mention, which will not be on this, is spectators. Now there's t uh, 10 total slots for spectators. so Or for players in a room. Now this is good for spectating like 3v3 if you need more camera angles. Only problem is when you do like a viewer games, you can't set the rooms to a certain amount of players, which is really annoying. So right now, like even if you set it as a 1v1, like if you give out that room name and password, anyone can join, but it will fill up to 10 players, which really sucks because then two people are watching the game and it just turns into who can join teams faster. You can't actually get it to five on five. So that kind of sucks. I hope Sionix, uh, uh fixes that soon, where if you set it for 3v3, only six people can actually join in the game. Everyone else can spectate or set it so like, like if I give out this password, I only want a max of eight players in my lobby at all. So then I can still have four before's, but no spectators. Hopefully they can figure that out. Let's continue. New face-off position. This is actually a really big change that I was shocked they didn't add into the patch notes. So before the patch, face-offs were in a certain order. It was always like the same rotation. Like say you were doing threes, it would start with two in the middle, like one in the middle, one on the left, and then one on the diagonal on the right. And obviously it's probably mirrored in my webcam. But then it would go through the order of sometimes there'd be three in the middle, then it'd be double diagonal, but it would be the same order. Uh, but then also the first player to load in was always the goalie on the first face off, no matter what. So if you had a good PC, generally you were always... A goalie, while, like, say you're a PS4 player, if you're playing with PC people, generally you would be going for the kickoff on that diagonal spawn. Now, after the patch, which is really interesting, all kickoffs are random, I think. It could be a certain order, but it's still... I'm pretty sure it's just completely random. There might be a rotation, but it doesn't begin on the same type of face-off every single game. Also, now, loading in order has no effect on where you start on kickoffs. To my knowledge, again, I'm not completely sure but i'm pretty sure that's how it works and you can now have two players on the same side of the field so you used to if you started on diagonal and two were in the middle the other guy would always be on the right side middle so you would know hey let's push the face off right since th that's where he's going to trend to like like either getting boost or or uh, coming for the cheat he would still kind of tend to the opposite side of where you start now you can start on the same side it could be back left middle and the diagonal or even two in the front like on that middle with a diagonal. So it does make it a little bit more confusing. Like it's a good idea to use those quick chat commands of saying I got it or defending. 
Because if you have a guy in the diagonal, yeah, like, you know he's going for it. But who cheats in that situation? If there's two in the middle, that would be a good idea to be, like, having a defendant or maybe in position. I don't know if that would work for the other middle guy, like, if you want to cheat up. But it'll be a bit confusing when you're playing in uh, randoms for threes, for sure. In twos, obviously, it doesn't really matter. Just call I got it if it's both of you in the uh, center. Same as the double diagonal. But, yeah, that's actually a really big deal. That changes faceoff strategy a bit. Uh, we'll see if that matters in like professional games, but that is actually a pretty big change and I like it because it's it adds a little bit more diversity into the game and like now people can't bitch that hey, I'm goalie on every phase off because I load fast like um, It was only the first one anyways, but whatever I'm not get into it. Anyway Basketball in custom games now you can choose the basketball ball uh, as a mutator it's kind of cool it just changes the skin of the ball i'm pretty sure the ball is exactly the same size as a regular ball and the same weight um one thing i thought it might do is change the face-offs to like that tip-off face-off that you get in hoops sadly it does not it's just a normal face-off so there's not really so it's not a big change but it's something so you can play with a different ball skin maybe and that'll be a quote obviously but whatever um maybe that uh they'll add some more in the future who knows? Probably not, because now we have uh, these little balls that they're selling, the stress balls, which is the normal ball of Rocket League. So I doubt they're going to get away too much from the normal ball, but especially like even in Neo Tokyo, like they have the normal ball as like a big thing right in the background. So I doubt they'll get away from it. But say when volleyball comes, if it does, they'll have a ball for that. So you can change it probably to that ball as well in the future in custom games. So that'd be nice. Next up, my favorite feature besides uh, Disable Goal Reset, maybe even more, Turtle Goals are here, guys. They now recognize Turtle Goals. Thank you, Psyonix. Turtle Goals now give points as well, plus 20 in matchmaking and plus 10 in private games. And you get this cute little turtle icon that you can see in the picture here. Plus, if you get one of those uh, like stat tracking items, I think some of them might do Turtle Goals. So you get one of those, turtle it up. Best way to get them, 1v1s, guys. Get those breakaways, turn on your backside, and get those turtle goals. It also tracks them now in your stats page in Rocket League menus. I think it's like options, stats, whatever it is. But it tracks them there now as well. That's pretty awesome. Turtle goals are the best. Moving on. Underpass and Rocket Labs. They did not mention this map except that it would not be in the Rocket Labs playlist anymore. I probably shouldn't have said it's in Rocket Labs. It's a Rocket Labs map, but whatever. Now it's basically Neo Tokyo without the skin. I think it's identical to the uh, map that is Neo Tokyo now. It's just, it doesn't have a skin. It's more of that Tron feel again. And it has these weird little gray boxes around. I, I don't know what those are for, but whatever. Either way, L Underpass is alive in Rocket Labs. It's just exactly the same as Neo Tokyo. I assume eventually Cyanix might take this map out of the game entirely since we have Neo Tokyo now. But for now... If you want to enjoy a more Tron-y feel of Neo Tokyo, feel free to do it in Underpass in Rocket Labs. Next up, maps now have more colors. So I put one uh, situation here, which is Wasteland, which is probably the easiest to see. But every map, I think, just has more like color saturation on your side of the field, like on blue side or orange side. Um, like I think it looks nice, because why not? It just makes it a little bit more vibrant. Like the sand in Wasteland, like on the blue side now, there's tons of blue on the sand itself on Wasteland compared to the old patch, which is just like one of the other uh, promo shots. But like you see the, the sand is just brown with, you know, some darker spots or whatever, but there is zero blue on the sand before. Now there's a little bit more color on each side. Like it's probably the lights hitting the sand or, or, or whatever it is, but still looks nice. Um, you can see this. I'm, I'm pretty sure every single map, maybe not urban. That one, for some reason, I'm feeling like it didn't change much. But I think it's, like, it's easily seen in Manfield. DFH, I believe, as well. Um, maybe Utopia. Not positive, again. But look for more saturation of colors. You probably can't notice it anymore because you've been on the patch so long. It's been, like, a week. So. But it's pretty cool. Nonetheless. Next up. Oh, I skipped one. Win streaks in competitive. This one is awesome. This change is ranked a bit. So now when you're on a win streak, you will face tougher opponents in competitive now, which is pretty cool. 
what that means is when you face tougher opponents, uh, you will get more uh, MMR for each win you get because you're a lower rank than them and they're a much higher rank, so you get more uh, MMR when you beat them. Of course, when you lose, you also lose less as well, but then your win streak will probably die. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but then you'll go back to facing opponents that are your same division or same rank or, or whatever. So that's actually really cool because now you'll be able to climb faster if, like, say, you wanted a second account or you haven't played ranked yet, you'll get up to your rank quicker because if you get like 10 games in a row where you win, you're just going to jump uh, division after division after division really quickly because you'll be facing, say, your challenger elite, like you might be facing rising stars or all stars or whatever it is. So that should be really cool. Should uh, change rank a bit. It is nice that you'll be able to climb faster, which also means like my, like if I do on um, the new season, a spud to stud, type season it's gonna go a lot quicker as well but that's kind of good because like we don't need to see every single prospect game right i mean we only need like three so that should be really neat i'm glad that they're still working on the rank system probably more changes to come for that but for now this is what we get also they said in the patch notes that you wouldn't be able to play with friends three tiers below or above you or past that like greater than three tiers that is not in yet, which is a problem, I guess, because they're trying to get rid of Boostin and Smurfin, which, you know, you can't really get rid of entirely. But right now, people can still boost as much as they want, which, whatever, because right now, you can play with all ranks. I'm surprised they said it in the patch notes, but didn't have it launch, which is kind of strange. Pretty sure it was in the patch notes. I could be wrong with that. Let me know if I'm wrong. Anyway, we'll continue. Hoops, boost pads fixed. Dirk fixed it. Thank you, Dirk. Basically, on the orange side, on the one diagonal, the left diagonal, the boost pad was up a little too far. So, basically, on faceoffs, you were screwed from that faceoff spot. If you face, like, say you were doing 1v1s, and you face someone across on the blue side, because the uh, blue sides were perfectly fine. I'm not sure how this got through. It seems just random. Maybe they had them there at first, and then they switched them, but they forgot to switch one. There's four corners, guys, not three. It's not a triangle, but no, it's fine. It happens. Um, uh, this picture was from Reddit uh, user Digital Dice, so thanks for that. But yeah, basically now the boost pad is where the should be here spot is. So that is fixed, but it will break your hoops replays, so beware of that. Same with like if you had replays on the old underpass, since that's changed now, those replays are broken as well. So be aware, replays when maps change will break. So just be careful of that in the future. And that'll do it, guys, for the eight things not mentioned in the June patch, which we decided was nine things. Maybe ten if you want to count replays broken. Whatever. Dirk, fix it, please. Thank you. I am done here. Hope you guys have a good day. I'm off to play some Rocket League. Later.